So I picked up this uh, iDigital fast charge wireless charging pad uh, from the reject shop. Um, it was cheap, so I saw it there, caught my attention, thought let's give it a go, let's have a look at it, see if it actually even works. Um, I've got a Pixel 3 XL, so I didn't even know whether it would charge this or not. Um, but set up, hooked it in, it worked well. Um, it certainly does charge the phone. It says charging slowly, but um, it's wireless charging, so you get that. Um, so it just came with the wireless charging pad here and USB cable, which is about a meter long. And uh, yeah, that's just your box. Um, interesting, it says 10 watts fast charging. And then I had a look on the rear. It says input 9 volts and output 9 volts. So input at 2.1 amps, output at 1.1 amps. So it's losing an amp. Um, but it only comes with a USB connection and a USB cable. Then looking at the back of the box, um, has power 10 watts input at 9 volts and power 5 watts input at 5 volts. So you can, according to this, you could either run this out of 9 or 5 volts. Um, but you're not going to get your 10 watt charging unless you, you're running 9 volts. So the advertising is a little interesting because it does say 10 watts, but the way they supply it with the standard USB cable, people aren't going to get your full 10 watts out of it. Um, so it'd be interesting to hook it into 9 volts a little bit later on and see whether it actually is happy or blow it up or whatever. Um, I'm sure it will work at 9 volts. It's just interesting because I don't know who else would actually run 9 volts through a USB. So it's not too bad. Aluminium body, a couple of little grip pads. Quite thin, um, the aluminium is quite nice, but of course, because I'm me, I wanted to pull apart and have a look at it. I struggled a bit to pull it apart. Um, this plastic inner piece is actually recessed into the aluminium quite well. Um, it was even quite hard to get a knife into um, into uh, get it up, and I damaged the corner a bit, but that's the way it is. Um, so inside it's pretty simple. Oh, one thing I'll show you. Um, so these two little pieces here, they light up. So um, they change colours when it's charging. Um, so open it up. First thing I notice, obviously, right here in the centre is your coil. It's pretty obvious while it's charging. Um, the other thing that was interesting is seeing you've only got one little LED here, one LED here, so two either side, and then you've just got this tube that runs around. That tube is what transmits the light to this this piece here. So just one LED per corner. Um, yeah, just solid little tube. Uh, quite flexible still, um, and standard um, hot glue holding it in. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing, I did a bit of driving today, and in one of my vehicles I don't have Bluetooth, and now I've got the Pixel, it doesn't have a USB port. Um, I was wanting to listen to audiobooks, but I also wanted to charge it as well because I was using the GPS the whole way there and back. Just want to get the battery topped up. Um, that I can't do with a little adapter that comes in the box, which made me think, since this is so cheap, it would be quite um, a fun project to uh, try to integrate this into my current um, car mount and uh, see what I could do with it. I'm going to have to relocate the circuit board around the back or something, but integrating the coil in the back where the phone goes in um, should be pretty straightforward. What I'd also like to do is find out exactly where the coil on, on, on the inside of the phone is um, so I can line it up and get the best efficiency. Um, so yeah, fun project. This is quite thin, really well built actually for something so cheap. Um, only thing is it doesn't come with a plug pack. Um, but, you know, everyone's got USB chargers, but once again, if you use USB, it's not going to be the full uh, full uh, power rating. So, um, yeah, I'll uh, turn this in. I'll play with the car mount and see if I can insert this into my car mount. Then that way I can wireless charge while listening to music. And the other advantage too, whenever I just throw it in the car, it's topping up the battery a bit. So wireless charging is quite nifty that way. So I'll see what happens. So, I've pulled it all apart. Um, it was a bit of fun. Uh, 
had this uh, double-sided tape here, but everything was actually had its own pieces of glue as well. The circuit board I managed to uh, pull apart without breaking it, even though it flicks quite a bit. Um, yeah, it had quite a fair, fair, fair bit of glue on it. The screws would have been nicer, but that's the way it is. So discard this because we don't need that. Uh, I unsoldered the board because I hopefully want to relocate it anyway. Hopefully the length of the lead so it isn't that critical. I'm um, thinking about it now, I may just re-solder it as is. Um, I unsoldered it to get good prying under it anyway to get it undone, so I had to do it regardless. Might re-solder as is just to check it's working, hold the phone over it and see if it's all happy. Um, coil's really interesting. If you see this, um, those wires are quite thick. I didn't think they'd be that thick, but anyway. And this backing plate, um, I think it's ferrite. I think it's a slab of ferrite. So that's quite interesting. Um, well, it makes sense though, um, being uh, electromagnetic. But um, yeah, so hopefully I can like relocate that on the back of the phone holder, this on the front. Probably, you know, run it something like that, run the wires that way and be able to plug the USB cable into the back. Um, even for the car, it might be interesting to see how it'll run 9 volts, although I assume with more voltage it'll run hotter. So in the car I've been using these, uh, in both of my cars, well the last three cars. This particular one is a Samsung, but um, the others I've actually got cheap eBay ripoffs and they work just as well. Um, the mechanism's not quite as smooth on the eBay ripoffs, but I find I don't use it very much. Um, because once it's in, it's in. Um, interesting part of the design. Um, but I haven't had Samsung phones for the last few phones. But I find this is just a really good um, design holder. You can tell all the dust on this one. Um, it came from a four-wheel drive. So, yeah. Dusty they are. So, what I like about this phone is the design of the, the cradle. If you can tell from there, see how it tapers in nicely. So, there's a button on the back that you can release it, but you could do that and do that all the time. You know, you're mucking around two hands. I find it works quite well. If you just brick it in until it just, just touches, and then throw on the phone in the car, you just throw it out, throw it in, and it won't tilt forward. It will not come forward. It won't come out. Um... Take my hands off there to improve. So even in my four drive bouncing around, that goes nowhere. It's nice, soft, rubbery. It provides a really good grip. Yet if I want to, I can just pull it straight out. So I don't even actually slide these tabs and stuff anymore. Just slide it in when I'm using it, slide it out. So my idea is then to find where on this phone. If you tell the phone's quite a bit larger than this uh, mount. It's funny, the old one, the first phone I had when I had this was barely over the top of the mount. But the mount still works well. The idea is to find where on this mount uh, this needs to go. Probably take some of this rubber backing off so I can recess it to keep the holding factor of that. And then uh, yeah, it may end up like this way, like up here. Tuck the board back here. Um, and down around here, somewhere. I'll work that out. And then uh, yeah, a bit of a DIY inductive um car holder for my phone now i've seen them around i know you can buy them um they're not super common but there's definitely places that have the um car um inductive car mounts for these i just haven't seen one i like yet i really like this mount um and the cheap ebay ripples i've got um so the plan is to see if i can make one of these work um and because they're a cheap ebay ripoff if I wreck it, I'll just buy another one and go back to where I was. So I've chickened out and uh, decided to use the cheap eBay version instead. A couple of reasons. One, it's easy to replace. That's a lot cheaper too. Um, the screws. So as you can tell, these are very, very similar. Um, slight differences, like the foam's not as quite as angled as on this one. Um, the Samsung one does grip a little bit better, which is why I do use that in my in my four-wheel drive. Um, at the end of the day, this one's quite acceptable, especially for the price difference. Um, seems good. So the big difference is, um, you see that mounting point is a bit lower on the, um, the 
eBay one, but the actual the ball sizes are the same, everything. Um, so I could actually interchange them on the vehicles, although it would just sit a little bit higher or lower than one or the other. Um, so the eBay one's actually got screws in it, so it's going to be a lot easier to modify. I don't know with the Samsung one where it might break like little plastic clips or something in pulling it apart. So since this one's cheaper and looks like it's easier to pull apart, uh, this is the one I'll go with. So I unscrewed the back and came up with a bit of a bang. Um, springs came everywhere. This spring and the other spring, they fell out. So yeah, it's under tension. Um, I did have it collapsed in when I pulled it out, so that so that probably is part of it. So what's interesting is you got the spring that pushes the two halves apart, then you've got a couple of gears in there. That's your spring for the button on the back. So looks like what the two gears are doing here is, um, let's see if I can hold this down all right so when you push the button in that pushes that up and it releases the gears and just allows the gears to spin each one of those gears um, contacts with each one of these runners and just lets them run out um, obviously when you push it in it's uh there you go it's ratcheted so when you push it in it um see the ratchet there so when you push that in you um it allows it to pull in, but it won't go out. So, quite a simple mechanism. No wonder they're cheap, uh, but they're quite effective. So, looking at this now, I don't even know whether I needed to pull it apart. Although, there's no way in here the circuitry is going to fit. Um, so, I'll probably still just put it on the rear. After all, there's plenty of room behind these. And so, yeah, um, pull apart. The next thing I'd actually need to do is do some research and find out where on my phone the coil is um, So that way I can line it up with the phone and get the best efficiency and hopefully less heat and all the rest So watched a couple of YouTube videos uh, Looked at a couple of articles and teardowns of the Pixel 3 XL and Now I know where my um, Charging coils roughly gonna be um, pretty much the good thing is it's a dead center of the phone, um, which makes it quite easy. I'll just pull that spring out so I don't lose it later on. Fly across the room or something. Um, so this is right where I want to put this coil, which is not too bad. Uh, works out pretty good, fairly you know, central at the top of the phone. So uh, see what I can do about cutting out this foam rubber and um, see if I can recess it back in there a bit just so phone's not protruding too far forward. Alright, happy with that placement. Um, what I'll do, I'll simply just trace around here with my uh, massive fat pencil, because I'm not sure where my thin one is. Um, it will certainly leave a decent mark then, uh, an old builder's pencil. Then I'll get my knife, I'll cut that out, hopefully I can just peel off the part of the foam, leave the rest of the foam there, and uh, See if I can get a nice recess. So, I've uh, confirmed that's definitely just uh, stick on foam from rubber stuff. Um, glue is a bit of fun, as you can see in some areas it came up pretty good, other areas I had trouble and I scraped it off as much. So, this is a very flat surface and I didn't want it to um, have any bumps, but um, it took off a little bit too much at the top, up that top corner there, but in all, um, as you can tell, it's very slightly thicker than the case, but a lot better than it would be if I um that getting sticky residue everywhere. A lot better than it would be if I had removed that foam. That was a bit of fun getting that back together and lined up again, and I'll just use a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to clean that sticky residue off that coil. Um, just because I really like the look of it. So, this mechanism was quite fiddly. I've got it back together. Um, it's pretty simple, as I showed earlier. If you pull this ratchet down, it pulls out. Uh, the spring is actually only applied to one side, and the gears do the rest of the work. Um, and as you can tell, when you're pushing them back together, it just ratchets together, and then the ratchet holds it in the position you want your phone to be in. And then, obviously, pull on the ratchet and that's the spring pulling that out, not my thumb. My thumb's just holding it out so it doesn't all spring back up. Um, 
so yeah then uh, the next thing to do is I'll probably leave it about there I'll screw it back together so screws are back together um, screws are back in the units back together <laughs> it turned out to be quite difficult um, and on one cog out but right now it really doesn't bother me um, I might actually pull that apart and just tweak that one cog. <laughs> it is bugging me now. Um, so, parts went flying all across the room a few times, had all sorts of fun, holding those three parts together, well, there's about six or seven parts, but three main parts under spring tension together while trying to put this cover on and then flipping it over and putting the screws in. It's quite difficult. Um, so, they're in, done. I never needed to pull it apart in the first place. Um, I was hoping the electronics might fit in here or something like that. There's just not enough room the way the mechanism is. So I'll put them on the back up the top and we'll go from there. Right, so I reckon visually I could either hide this or um, make it a feature. I'm not going to be able to hide it. I probably could, but why not? Let's make it a feature. Look at that. I reckon... Uh, Looks like a bit of fun. Um, I've just put the cable in because, hey, it'd be nice if that fits. Notice that by putting the cable in, it does lift it up from the board a bit. Um, so, the trick is, do I just pull it further forward? I think I might do that, actually. I was going to put it here. I like the radius. But then USB is going to be all over the place. Um, I'll put it further up here, it's not going to be an issue plugging it in. So, what else do we use but uh, good old hot glue? This could be a mess and I might have to do it again, or it might be good. Now, this is a particularly sticky version of the hot glue. So, uh, let's see what happens. This is clearly going to be aesthetically beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Not. I'm just testing out a theory. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, no one's ever going to see the back of this where it sits in this vehicle anyway. So I'm not that fast. Is that set yet? No. Give it a uh, couple minutes to set and then I'll pump some glue under the rest of it. Alright, a couple minutes later, it's a bit more rigid. I'll pump some more glue under the rest of it. Um, so hopefully the circuit board just has a bit of support. Especially since it's exposed, it'd be really nice if it just didn't uh, just fall off going over a bump or something like that. That'd be really nice. It stays on here. What a beautiful mess that is. Hot glue. Very useful. Never very pretty. I'll let that dry for a minute. So, soldering iron's warmed up. Uh, this has cooled down enough to uh, make a wonderful mess. But at the end of the day, all about practical, not about pretty. This works. Um, probably do a little bit more. I don't know. I wouldn't mind doing some mechanical support to that plug although once it's plugged in it's gonna, not going to get yanked on um, yeah it may seem not ideal to uh, go up when typically cigarette light is below it but I think by the time I'm like that and uh, the phone is quite tall so that'll cover that I don't think it'll be a big deal um, if I don't like it I'll just change it later on so i um, got some thick cable here that I'll use for something else. Yeah, it's not that thick, but thick enough. Um, so I'm going to reuse it for this. So, that should do that there. Plus another one. Now, what I just didn't measure there 
I'm going to have to cross these over because uh, the way this circuit was beforehand compared to now. Um, yep, she's a little bit different. It's probably a bit long on that one. Yeah, that one's not even cut nice. Yeah, this is uh, literally just quite winging it. I haven't pre-planned anything. I'm making it up as I go, but hey, that's half the fun. And yes, I'm not sure where my brass tinning stuff is. It's called Goot. It's quite good. I like it. Um, I've used it for years. And right now, I don't even know where it is. So, that's alright. The tip's not too bad. This iron doesn't get super hot. Well, they're quite hot. And that hasn't even done the other side. Let me grab a bit more solder. Um, it's not too bad. So yeah, that's a bit long. But, I don't know. I uh, may have to recut these. We'll see what happens. There you go, just slide that on. It's pretty thick and it's copper, so it's just taking a bit for this iron to get. I've got a bigger iron, which I probably should have used for this particular circumstance to get heat into it because we're just not getting quite and just not getting enough underneath there. And with a bigger iron that would just flow right through. But uh, yeah, it's always fun. Yes, this thing here, you wonder what it is, it's kind of like our helping hands um, back from my laser cutting days. It is terrible. It was welded on a welder that just was just about dead. Erratic wire speed, all sorts of stuff. But I whipped it up one day to hold a couple of connectors I needed to weld, uh, sold together and just done the job for years since. Um, why build another one if it's not broken? It's ugly, but it works. So let's solder one of these on. That's going to be fun because I'm going past the connector there. So that will be interesting. And this is going very close to that chip. So let's bend this a bit more. If I've got something to bend it with. There, supplies. Yes, junk everywhere. Bend that a bit more just so I can try to clear that ice. I'm still solving it. Taking the heat at all. I don't really need to use that bigger iron. That's it. I don't look like it, but as you can tell, it's not actually touching that pin. So it'll be fine. There's a reasonable gap there still. Now, the fun thing is, I don't know whether this is AC or DC, and considering I'm just winging it. I'm going to cross them over just in case, just in case there is a polarity thing there because I don't think this will power the coil, and theoretically it shouldn't, unless it senses from the phone itself, I believe. So if that's the case, I can't actually power it up and test it. See whether it is AC or DC because that's flying the coop. So what I'll do. So I'll solder these together and really would love a tip cleaner right now. Do a little bit of heat into these. Just 
just nice just to pre-warm everything sometimes just a bit oh and that's actually quite warm mm, don't really like that let's just do this for a test and then I might tidy it up because it is messy That's very messy. Right, I'm gonna have a second go at that afterwards. Um, I'll just tidy that up a little bit and then we'll uh, put a phone on it, see if it works. All right, I trimmed that up a bit, it's flushed now. I'd really probably like to pull that off. I will, I will pull that off again, put some heat shrink on it. It's messy, I don't like it. Um, so I'll have to do that, pull that back off that end, feed the heat shrink over, that's fine. But before we do that, let's actually see whether it works. I actually don't mind the look of the coil there. I might leave it there. Because I'm the kind of person who likes in the guts. Or pretty covers over things. So speaking of the guts, let's try it out. Um, I think I'm going to try it out live. See what happens. Alright. So we got our two indicator... LEDs, um, it's interesting they flashed green, they went back to blue, and we've got a little power LED as well, which I don't think actually shows up on the uh, unit when it's all put together, so I haven't seen that before. I did tape over my phone because I keep getting messages, um, and you guys don't have to see them. So, let's see what happens. Ah, that's good. And yes. Alright, had to put my pin in, wasn't going to do that on camera. Um, there we go, look at that. 75% charging slowly. But you saw when they came up, you saw what you could see of the ring. Uh, the tape was covering a bit of it. Um, but yeah, it's charging. Um, it's interesting bit of fun. Um, I like the fingerprint scan. Um, fingerprint section is still uh, quite exposed on that which is good because um, it means I don't have to pull it out of the mount if I need to actually unlock it with my fingerprint. Um, it's easy enough to do. Um, if you see there from in front um, so that's pretty easy to do without showing too much what's on my screen. Um, yeah, so it works. Rip it down, reconfigure it, put it back together how it suits me. It's half the fun, isn't it? Alright, I tidied it up, put some heat shrink over these um, connections. It's a lot better. Um, not pretty, but it works. If you look down there, it's actually uh, touching the coil, which is really good because I've got a case on it, so that way... At least the closer it is, where the inductance will be. Um, threw a bit more heat, hot glue gun on it, just to be sure it's not going to fall off on me. Um, yeah, so I'll just hook this up. And power it back up again. The lights flash. And look at that, it's charging. And I'll clear those notifications. Alright, so it is charging at 74%. Um, got pretty lights going on here. I'm not going to even bother with them anyway. Um, for what I'm doing, doesn't matter. Take them off. It should change colour. There you go, change colour to blue because that's what the ring was on the old one when it's charging. Put it back in. We'll change to green saying it's charging um yeah straightforward really basic effective looks like i need a bit more adhesive on that and yeah it's all good um sometimes keeping it simple works um it's not the prettiest thing it's a hack job let's face it um 
but it works. So, hey, why not? All right, I couldn't help myself. Um, you know, I'm like, I've got to test it. So, let's see what voltage we have. So I'm getting a zero volts DC. Interesting. So, what does that mean? Interesting. So at 4.2 volts for a moment there. AC, then it went away. It's very intriguing. I don't know what this is doing. So that'd be interesting. Let's see if anything comes up with Hertz. Nothing. Yeah, on DC, I get no volts. It clearly charges, it works. Maybe my multimeter is not fast enough. I don't know. Um, I'm getting random stuff on AC. I don't know. It's interesting to see. Um, I might have to play with this a bit better, a bit further. Maybe with a better multimeter. See what happens.